All right, folks, it's Tito here with the Buckeye Blitz. Follow me on the X at Bit Happens. Uh, we are brought to you by Fantasy Sports DSP Media. Make sure you go and check that out. Uh, check out our website. Download the app. The app is free for Apple Android users. We've got so many great shows coming out all the time on the go. Check it out. Uh, Fans Free Sports, download the app. Again, I am Tito at that happens when you find me. Look, a couple weeks into the season now, Ohio State 2-0 and like we expected them to be. And uh, coming off a big 56 nothing win over Western Michigan. A dominating performance. Much better as a whole than the week one performance by Ohio State. Uh, they held Western Michigan to less than 100 yards of total offense. Absolutely amazing in getting Ohio State getting the shutout in this one. Uh, dominated from start to finish and um, was never challenged at all in any way, shape, or form. It's a when you look at the first game of the year against Akron, that first half was very choppy, especially the first quarter. The way Ohio State's offense started off really struggled early on to get some kind of rhythm going, but then once they got going in uh, the first two games, that's an amazing stat right there. 108 to six, haven't a lot of touchdown yet, just the two field goals to Akron. So um, Buckeyes doing great so far. Another nice game uh, for Will Howard. The running game got going with Quinchon Junkins, Travion Henderson, the receivers. Uh, you know, Jeremiah Smith is as average, actually even better than as advertised. Took that little kind of hitch route and went 70 yards for a touchdown. Just ran away from everybody. Uh, so the offense is humming. The, the offensive line looked a lot better in that game against Western Michigan than they did against Akron as a whole. I felt like in the Akron game that Ohio State, the offensive line struggled early. And then I think they looked better later on in the game simply because they overpowered Akron. So it was more a question of physicality versus maybe scheme and skill, if that makes sense. I feel like in the game against Western Michigan, it was more about skill and scheme. I think that they dominated that from start to finish on, on the in the trenches. Actually, both sides of all in the trenches did a great job of that. But uh, specifically, the offensive line looked a lot better. And a couple of silly penalties cost big plays down the road. Uh, Junkins had the 80-yard touchdown run, got called back um, because of a penalty. But it uh, Junkins and Henderson looked great. They're both averaging like over seven or eight yards a carry. i got to look at the exact number. But at least seven yards a carry, they're both averaging. Uh, Howard looks fantastic. And the receivers are all getting involved, which is fun to see. So... Um, the other thing I noticed in the Akron game, it just had a chance to break a couple of punts maybe for, for a touchdown. Ohio State has not had a punt return for a touchdown since the 2014 season. They will get one this year. I can almost guarantee you that. But Brandon Innes, in the, so in the game against Akron, he was very aggressive against Akron and uh, you know the one where he went back and he was running backwards towards the end zone, running, well, I mean, he was running towards his own end zone and then scooped up a ball that got by him and took off for a gain. And against Western Michigan, it was almost the opposite. He was very conservative. And it was smart. He There were not great opportunities for him to get big returns. but uh, So a lot of fair catches took place in that game. Didn't take any chances, which is a, a sign of maturity. I don't know if it's, a, if it's from the coaching staff or from him personally, but the fact that he was more conservative with the football on punt returns, I thought was pretty cool to see. So uh, Buckeyes get the big 56 to nothing win over Western Michigan. 2-0, and like I said, coming in. The defense is... The defense is amazing. I think it'll be fun to watch this entire season. Now they get the bye week. Uh, this season, because of the way college football, the way the schedule is set up, uh, everyone's getting a couple of bye weeks. So Ohio State, this is their first bye week. Their second one will come in the week after the Oregon game. Ohio State typically does pretty well after bye weeks. Now, um, if you look at the past, look at the recent history of Ohio State, because of the fact they don't lose many games. I mean, let's face it, at Ryan Day, their losses really have been – uh, to Michigan and in CF, but nonetheless, in by after bye weeks, Ohio State typically does pretty well. The last time they lost after a bye week in the season, I'm not talking about the layoff in the between you know uh, Big Ten championship and bowl game type thing. I'm talking about I'm talking about in season bye weeks. The last time Ohio State lost after a bye week was back in 2005. They dropped a game to Penn State. Since then, they've been uh, perfect in after bye weeks. Um, and they've got, again, two this year, the one this week before they take on Marshall. I fully expect them to blow out Marshall as well, and then they'll have one after the Oregon game. Let's look at the Big Ten now after just a, a couple of games into the season. I know it's early, 2-0, and but um, you know the way we walked into the season, came into this thinking that Ohio State and Oregon are the class of the Big Ten, no doubt about it. And I honestly, I came into the season with um, very low expectations for Michigan. They've lived up to that. But so now, though, you do the landscape on, on the Big Ten. Ohio State is the, 
the class of the Big Ten still. They've done nothing to dispel uh, that thought. Now, the number two team, though, is it still Oregon? You know, Oregon's uh, they, they struggled in their opening game against Idaho, and then um, Boise State had them on the ropes as well. So Oregon needs to show their offensive line has not looked very good to this point. Oregon's got to show something in the game. It's Oregon State coming up, but they've been – Less than impressive. Uh, Dylan Gabriel's played great. Thrown for a lot of yards, been very um, efficient with the football, but they're not scoring a lot of points based on how efficient and how well Dylan Gabriel has played. The offensive line has been bad, so they've got a big one there. I, I still would say right now as we sit into week three that Oregon is still the second best team of the Big Ten. The third best team might have thought it was Penn State after Green and barely got by in that game. I actually think USC right now is a opening win of 40 to nothing win, but then lost to Iowa State. But USC is 2-0, and uh, the big win over LSU to start things off, and USC looks really damn good right now. They're probably the third best team in the Big Ten. After that, I'd probably put Penn State and then Iowa. And really after that, Rutgers for me. I like Rutgers better than Michigan this year. I said all along that I think that um, – Rutgers will win the same amount or more games than Michigan this season, and nothing has changed my mind on that one. So uh, Rutgers 2-0 and as well. I, I like what Greg Schiano is doing there, and it's a situation where they've got first easy schedule for sure, but uh, easier schedule they get to avoid all the big boys this year for the most part. So I think Rutgers has a chance to have a really special season, and Michigan, my God, looks so bad against Texas. The Michigan offense is tough to watch. Their defense is still good, although they did get picked apart pretty good by Quinn Ewers. He will pick other people apart as well. Nonetheless, um, I do think, though, that uh, that Michigan's going to be a team that's going to uh, struggle this year. I, I, I could see a three- or four-loss Michigan team this year. I really could. I think, that, like I said, I think Rutgers ends up winning uh, probably more games than, um, than Michigan or the same amount as Michigan will. So keep an eye on all that kind of stuff coming up in week three. It's kind of weird having the bye week. You know, it's a great week in Columbus if you're a wedding uh, coordinator because you get the two bye weeks uh, in you know, in Columbus especially when you have this situation where uh, bye weeks where people try to plan their weddings typically in Columbus uh, because they don't want to have any kind of conflict with Ohio State games. Looking at Ohio State's schedule now, by the way, and I failed to mention Nebraska. Nebraska also 2-0. Uh, they dominated Colorado um, and, and Deion Sanders in that game. But Ohio State's schedule – when it start when the schedule first came out, I thought Ohio State's toughest games were going to be the Oregon and probably Penn State. And now you got to look at Nebraska as being a tough game as well. Um, that is Ohio State's homecoming game, probably be a new kick, I would imagine, for that one. But they've got kind of a, a tough stretch there with like with Iowa and or with Nebraska and Iowa and Oregon in there. And at Penn State, it's still going to be a difficult game because Penn State's a tough place to play. Ohio State's schedule to me looks tougher right now than it did a month and a half ago just because of the fact that I think Nebraska is better this year than they have been. Um, Dylan Riola has played really well. The defense for Nebraska looks very impressive. That could cause problems. But I will say this. I still fully expect Ohio State to go undefeated and play in the Big Ten Championship game against either Oregon or USC would be my guess. Get a chance, win that one, head off into the CFP as one of the top four seeds, get the first round by. So we'll talk a lot more Big Ten football coming up. we got some basketball news to discuss as well. Um, but this has been the Buckeye Blitz. Look, Make sure you like, listen, subscribe, all those things. Go to fanstreamsports.com and, uh, and check out all the live shows there. Download the app. It's a free app for Apple Android users. This has been the Buckeye Blitz right here. I'm at That Happens on Twitter. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you again soon.